Well, good morning, everybody. How are we doing today? Happy. Yeah, happy? Good. Coffee's working? Great. Sorry you guys couldn't find uh, some room in Tom's speech today, but uh, probably uh, I'll promise to make it as painless as possible. Uh, today's speech is about Get Yoast or Your Toast, uh, an SEO plugin uh, developed by Yoast. So, uh, first question is what is the WordPress SEO plugin? Uh, it's simply an all inclusive SEO plugin that helps users streamline basic SEO tasks. Um, you are not going to leave here being an SEO expert. I guarantee you that. Okay. Uh, we'll start this with just a short anecdote. Um, I had a, a friend, bless her heart, that uh, had a little cooking blog. And she, um, she wanted to you know, start ranking the search engines for certain recipes. And you know, she reached out to me just for a little bit of advice uh, as to you know, what, uh, what to do, best practices, you know, certain tools to use. So, of course, showed her Google Analytics, you know, the basics, and then I recommended uh, the WordPress SEO plugin by Yoast. Well, the mistake I made is I didn't really give her basic SEO guidelines. I just kind of, hey, here's the plugin, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory, you know, dive into it. Big mistake. About uh, two weeks later, she calls me, and she's like, hey, I got everything set up on Yoast. To, you know, I think it's great. You know, you mind checking it out just to make sure I didn't make any errors? Well, I log in, and uh, the first thing I notice is in her title tag, she had uh, rank number one for cooking recipes. <laughs> I said, you were close, but not quite. So, you know, the uh, WordPress SEO plugin covers uh, title tag, meta description optimization, verification of third-party tools, on-page SEO analysis was probably the best feature that you'll be able to implement. Uh, how many here are just average bloggers? How many people own a business and looking to optimize their site? Okay, great. This will definitely help, uh, especially with proper, proper social media integration. I imagine social media is pretty important for everybody because it should be. Uh, and bulk editing. If you have very large sites, uh, it, this plugin will help you um, optimize all your titles and metas you know, without having to get into every single page. So what are we really going to learn today? Catnip. <laughs> all seriousness, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just walk you through the plugin uh, step by step, section by section. Um, this first part, you know, um, typically I like to have an open forum, but there's so much here that I want to just kind of get through the basics. And then at the end, you know, if you have any questions, just write them down, and then we can go over them at the end if we have enough time. All right, so the first section, the first time you log into WordPress SEO, uh, you'll have the general settings tab, okay? Uh, the first thing you'll see is you'll have the start tour. Um, if you haven't ever used this plugin, just go ahead and, and do the tour, just to get a little bit more familiar with it. Uh, it, it definitely won't hurt. Um, if you've had a website and had Yoast before, and you currently have it, and you think you just completely messed up all the settings, you don't know what you've done, just go ahead and click reset default settings and start from scratch. It's much easier to start from scratch than it is to try to Try to find the things that you missed. The third thing is tracking. Um, typically, you can just leave this option blank unless you want to provide data back to Yoast. Um, you know, as the developer side of me always chooses tracking, but it's up to you. It's your preference if you want to share your data. Security. Um, I would definitely check this, especially if you have multiple user permissions on your site. You've got contributors on your website, um, and you don't want them to be able to uh, alter advanced settings like setting up 301 redirects and other things like that. So if you want to have, you know, a good, just make sure that <coughs> nobody else is messing up your site, definitely click on this. Security. Webmaster tools. Verification. Uh, you want to use this section to verify Google, Bing, uh, Google and Bing webmaster tools. Um, is everybody familiar with webmaster tools? Definitely do some research on, on Webmaster Tools. I can't get into it too much today, but it definitely helps you submit sitemaps, does a lot of things, gives you an insight of how Google sees your website. So I definitely want to link up your blog to this. When you set up your Webmaster Tools, Google will provide you a snippet of code, and you can just come plug it in here and click Save, and it will automatically populate it for you and get it connected. It also uh, can verify some other tools like Alexa, Yandex, and, and Pinterest. So if you guys are using those tools as well, this will help you streamline that as, uh, as well. All right, titles and metas. I know everybody here has got to be familiar with titles and metas, or at least heard them at some point, right? Coffee wearing off? 
<laughs> All right, so the first thing we got here is title settings. Um, <clears throat> Google or WordPress is going to automatically detect whether or not that you need this option enabled. Um, however, um, I have seen some instances where you will start getting duplicate title tags. Uh, and so what you want to do if you are seeing duplicate title, uh, site titles, you're going to want to uh, check the force rewrite titles box. All right, so depend, and every theme is different, so uh, just depending on the theme and if you see those issues, that's when you want to check. All right, title separator. This is really up to your, uh, this is your preference, okay? This is the thing that separates, you know, the, the page title, your location identifier, or your brand name, you know, in the actual search engines. Typically, I like to use pipes. Uh, that's my personal preference. It tends to be the standard uh, across the board, but some people like to use hyphens. Some people like to use colons. Um, it just really depends on what you want to do. Um, again, I think the pipe is the best thing. In my eye, it just separates everything evenly, and I think it provides a better user, user experience. <clears throat> All right, so as you can see, this is one pulled uh, from our website, Southern Web. And you can see this cleanly breaks everything. So that's what I would recommend. All right, site-wide meta, okay? Uh, there's a number of settings here. Uh, no index subpages of archives. Um, so when you have uh, a blog that's been posted, then two years down the road it gets archived. Um, you want what will happen is it can potentially cause duplicate content issues, especially when you have paginated pages. Um, so I would definitely click this option because you'll have that live blog, and then within the archives, a different section of your website, that same article will pop up which may flag for duplicate content. So I would go ahead and check that. Use meta keywords tag? Absolutely not. There's no point. I mean, if you feel like checking it, go for it. It really has no uh, influence whatsoever anymore. Back in the day, 10 years ago, it did. Not the case anymore. All right, add uh, NOODP meta robux tag. This is uh, for DMOZ. Um, DMOZ is a, a directory, a highly curated directory. It used to have a lot of influence back in the day. It still has some influence. Um, but what happens is you'll start to notice that your meta descriptions will be pulled from DMOZ, which you may not want. So if you start to see that happening, go ahead and check that box. But in most cases, you're not going to ever have to, to experience that. Uh, same thing with the NOYDRR meta robots tag. Uh, it's not necessary unless uh, you start to see that your meta descriptions are being pulled from Yahoo description. So if in any case you just start seeing your meta descriptions popping up and you, they're nowhere onto your site, I would go check Yahoo and DMOZ, but I highly doubt you're going to run into those issues. All right. <clears throat> General settings, clean up the head section. Uh, this is really to help page load time. Um, as some of you may know, user experience in, is one of the main factors of ranking uh, in the search engines these days. Um, so page load time. Uh, the faster you're, that your website loads, Google is going to reward you. If you and I are, are targeting the same topic and my website loads in one second, your website loads in five seconds, which one has the better user experience? One second, right? We want to prevent those people from bouncing off the site. So one of the ways we can do that is clean up the head section here. Uh, the Hide RSD links uh, stands for really simple uh, discoverability. Um, it's really for if you are posting to your WordPress, WordPress blog from other third-party platforms. Um, in most cases, you really won't need this. But if you are one of those people who post from a third-party platform, go ahead and check this. Hide the uh, LWW or WLW manifest links. Um, if you use Windows Live Writer, is there anybody here who uses Windows Live Writer? Yeah, okay. I didn't think so. I don't know. Nobody ever uses it. So if you do use it, go ahead and, uh, and uh, uncheck that. Or check it if you do use it. Hide short link for post. Uh, checking this box is going to remove the get short link box uh, inside the, the dashboard when you're actually editing a page or a post. Um, it, <clears throat> it adds a little bit of code. Um, really, you could go either way. I, I would, uh, if you want that short link, you're one of the ones who does do a lot of social media and, and putting your blogs out there, um, and you like to use short links, I would leave that uh, unchecked. But if you do you know, want to clean it up and you have no need for the short links, go ahead and check it. All right, hide RSS links. Uh, you definitely want to leave this box unchecked. Uh, this option is going to remove your RSS feed from the header 
and Google and Bing are not going to be able to crawl uh, your RSS feed. Your RSS feed is a great way for Google to really index your site well. Um, so I would definitely leave this box unchecked. Social settings for Facebook. Everybody loves Facebook, right? Okay, so what you want, you always add the open graph meta tag. Uh, this, is, this is the thing that's going to make sure that your, um, your posts are being properly formatted on Facebook. So I'm sure you've made post something, the picture wasn't right or wasn't pulling a picture, it wasn't grabbing the right description, um, all those things. You want to, again, it comes down to user experience. People are less likely to click on your, your social media post if it's not optimized and doesn't look clean. So go ahead and check this. You're going to want to connect uh, yourself either as a Facebook admin or use the Facebook app as admin. Um, just go ahead and connect your, your Facebook admin, just your personal account, because then you can connect your actual page within that. All right, so you're going to want to plug in your, your URL and then uh, an image URL as well. So keep this in mind. A lot of people have a lot of trouble with the image sizing uh, when they're posting to Facebook. So ideally, when you're getting an image for your blog post or your page, try to make sure that the, the image is 1,200 by 630 pixels or as low as 600 by 315 pixels. This is going to make sure it's perfectly optimized for Facebook and uh, it's going to pull the right picture. Okay, so this, what will happen is if there's not an image um, on the post, this is what's going to pull. So that way you have some consistency in your post and that way you can always ensure there will be an image. Twitter, same thing. We always want to add the Twitter card metadata. Uh, you can choose your preference on uh, card type. You can have summary, summary with photo. Um, I would go ahead and add the photo. Um, it's just, it's going to, posts that have pictures tend to have higher click-through rates. They're more inclined to be clicked on. Of course, you're going to want to also enter your uh, username or it's not going to work. For Google Plus, how many people in here actively use Google Plus? Okay, everybody next year, I want to see all those hands up because uh -huh. Google Plus is so powerful. Um, as you know, it's a social media platform, and they prefer it. In all honesty, um, so many cases I've seen every single metric uh, pointing in the favor of website A. However, the only metric that uh, website B has in favor of website A is, is Google Plus shares, plus ones. So really start taking, uh, it, you know, you thought, oh, well, none of my friends, none of the people I, I work with, you know, is uh, on Google Plus. Use it for search engine purposes because those posts actually are crawled by Google and will show up in the search results. They do get indexed. That is a whole different beast. I could spend six hours on that. Yeah. Yeah. Like you don't want to. No, you don't want to at all. Like you said, you want to have one page for each individual office. So are you saying that if you were using other search engines, your content might take that content and might be instead of Google Absolutely. Absolutely. You should always be focusing on it the minimum, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus. Those four should always be in your repertoire. XML sitemaps. Uh, this is one thing that is probably the most beneficial thing you can do um, if you don't have an XML sitemap. Most, if you do have WordPress, good chance you do. Um, but making sure you have this set up properly is imperative. Uh, so what exactly is an XML sitemap? Well, it's simply a document that helps Google understand all the pages on your website. It's essentially an outline and tells them, hey, all these pages are connected. That way they can hop from page to page and discover all of your content. Um, like I said, always have this box checked. Um, your sitemap is always going to live at whatever your domain name is, forward slash sitemap underscore index XML. Um, what you're going to want to do as soon as you, you get this box, you want to generate your XML sitemap and go back into Webmaster Tools for both Google and Bing and submit that uh, XML sitemap. That way they have it in their records and it will dynamically update as you add pages. So don't worry about having to resubmit an XML sitemap. It will auto dynamically update as you new add new content. How would it take the Google Plus and what? Google Webmaster Tools. 
make sure you want to you want to definitely set up with Google Webmaster Tools. Yes. Is there a problem if you're already using site map .xml? No, no, no. This is just WordPress SEO's uh, you know standard. Well, if you switch though, or can you use both? Or? There's no need to use both. So just choose one or the other. Um, I would recommend using uh, Yoast's sitemap. It's just never had an issue. I've never seen it have an issue. So. Can you change that address in Yoast? Uh, no, you cannot. That's what uh, it's you automatically generated. Yeah, the, the Google Webmaster Tools is familiar as well. Yeah, absolutely. So. Don't just check it since you're done. Know that it's familiar. Right. And Google will, you know, they will end up eventually crawling it and finding that sitemap. However, you know, due diligence, go ahead and just submit it because you're going to have a faster inclusion. Um, you know, if you're communicating with Google, you're just at that point you're just relying on Google to find you, rather than going to Google and say, "Hey, here you go." It's much, much, much easier. Yes. So, so what you say is um, use that um, URL to, to domain.com forward slash sitemap and just go to Webmaster Tools and include it there manually. Yes. Somewhere. So there's an option inside Webmaster Tools, and unfortunately I can't break down Webmaster Tools right now. It's a whole other class, but there's a section in there to submit your XML sitemap. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, another thing you have within the XML sitemaps, you can enable the user sitemaps. Um, the user sitemaps, you really only want to keep this option checked if you have a very large website and have a lot of contributors, and you want to make sure that they're all getting uh, credit for it. Um, Typically, we leave you know smaller blogs and businesses not really necessary, um, and you can also choose which user roles to include as well. So, you know, if you don't want your editor or your uh, you know subscriber, you know, any of those user roles to show, up, leave them out. Uh, typically, you just want your author to uh, be sh authors be shown up in this. All right. <coughs> So WordPress automatically pings Google and uh, Bing every time you create new content. Um, however, Yoast um, has this plugin um, or this feature to where you can also ping Yahoo and Ask.com. Uh, eventually, these guys the same thing, you know, same principle. You can either rely on them to wait and crawl your website, or you can just go ahead and give it to them. Um, so go ahead and just always have these options checked. All right, exclusions. Um, this is really up to you. Um, depending on how complex your site is, you may have multiple custom post types. So, you know, pages and posts, those are post types. Um, certain websites, you know, at Southern Web, we develop websites. If you're an attorney, we'll create an attorney custom post type. That way we can include every single attorney on the about page. And simply all you'd have to do is fill out a form and it populates all the data. So different post types, if you want to include in your site map, yeah, that's really up to you. However, there's certain, um, Post types you may not want to include in your, your site map and aren't really necessary, i.e., media and uh, things like presentations. You may not want those in there. All right, excluding taxonomies. Uh, just like post types, you may have some of these taxonomies that just really don't make sense to include, um, like format, for instance. Uh, not really necessary to include that. Um, I would always leave categories and tags unchecked. Permalinks, permalinks. Um, permalinks are the URLs that are used inside WordPress. Uh, so <clears throat> we have the ability to modify how they're structured. Okay, so you have certain things like stripping the category base. Um, you know, so within your blog, you may have different categories for, say, you are a personal injury attorney. Okay, say you have car accidents. Okay. That would be a category. So within your blog, you, your URL structure may be domain name.com slash blog slash car accidents slash post name. However, if you've got blog and category in there, it tends to make that URL very long and cumbersome. So it's some, in some instances, if you have a really small blog and it's not a very deep architecture, it does make sense to leave the category in there. That way people know uh, what they're, you know, what section they're in. However, if you've got a very intense architecture that, that goes deep, I would go ahead and strip this. Because um, typically, people have been browsing through and, and know what category they're typically on. All right, enforcing trailing slash. Um, this simply just adds a, a forward slash to the end. I always check this just for consistency. 
because um, I hate when uh, I'm just OCD, and so uh, I hate when I'm browsing from website to website, and I notice things like uh, the forward slash up there, then the next page is not there. So just for consistency's case, I would go ahead and, and uh, put that in there. Removing stop words from slugs. So when you have a, an article topic um, that's maybe a longer and has stop words like and and but, those, those words have absolutely no SEO value. So there's no reason to include them in your URLs. However, it is very useful to include you know, targeted keywords inside your URLs. But including things like and and but, not necessary. And again, it just makes those URLs a little bit longer and cumbersome. All right, so redirect attachment URLs, the parent post URLs. This is a feature I actually really like. Um, what it does is typically if you post a picture inside an article and you click on that image, it takes you to just a blank page with just that image, right? That's, you know, it's great if you want to download that image, you know, but it really adds no value to me unless I'm a developer and need that image. Well, what you can do is you can select this, and what it will do is, you know, say you've reused an image in a different article, it will redirect that URL back to the parent post. So whatever the first post you used that picture in, it'll reference that article. And the reason I like it is if you've used that image somewhere else, it'll take you back and find other related content. Because obviously, you know, if you're writing natural, good quality content, you know, that picture obviously should have had something to do with that, that previous first post. So again, clicking on that image takes them to another piece of content that they might find relevant and useful. All right, uh, reply to the question mark, reply to com variables. Only check this if you have a very large site with a lot of comments. Um, what it is, is if people have JavaScript disabled, um, it just uh, removes the option to, uh, to crawl those things. And it really improves the crawl crawling efficiency. Um, so, but really, this is just a very specific case. If you have a very large site where people comment a lot, this is the only case that you would really want to use it in. All right. <clears throat> uh, redirect ugly URLs to clean permalinks. You really have to be careful with this. Um, it is effective, but it is also known to break a lot of plugins. Um, so if you do use a lot of plugins, be very wary of using this. Um, however, if you don't use any plugins, go ahead and use it because you know a lot of people will mistype a URL. Say they have your business card, and they go to manually type in your URL. They may miss a character or whatnot, and typically it would pop up with a 404 page because that page doesn't exist. However, WordPress is intuitive enough to notice you know, hey, this is just a misspelling. We know what they were trying to do, and it'll send them to the right page. Right. Canonical settings. Uh, I get a lot of questions about canonical settings. Um, typically, basically, what canonical means is if you've got, say, a parent page, um, say I'm talking about appeals back to attorneys, um, but then I also have another page about federal appeals. Naturally, those are two related topics, obviously. One's more broad, one's a little bit more targeted. However, there may be some content on that parent page that I may need to reuse in my second page. So what the canonical tag does is it tells Google, hey, we borrowed some content from this other page. It isn't duplicate. We meant to do this. It was intentional. Please don't penalize us for it. So it just gives credit, and it really passes that page rank back to that first page. Okay, so it just gives credit where it's due. Oh yeah, so there's two options there. Um, you, you can force it to do um, HTTP or HTTPS. If you are, have an e-commerce site where you're processing payments and the majority of your pages are secured, then go ahead and force the HTTPS just so you can ensure that uh, everything is, is secure. Internal links, breadcrumbs. Does anybody here know whether or not if they're using breadcrumbs? Do you all know what breadcrumbs are? Breadcrumbs, if you've ever been viewing a blog, is at the very top, it'll say home, you know, maybe a category, or it says you are here. You know, it's almost like the, you know those maps in the mall that tell you exactly where you are? That's what breadcrumbs are. It just tells you where you are inside the blog. Breadcrumbs are absolutely great for search engines because it develops an internal linking structure that connects all your content. 
great for SEO purposes. Always, I would definitely recommend having your uh, your breadcrumbs enabled because it just also provides a better user experience. Um, because you know, if we're within the blog, say they find this one article very useful, they can see immediately see that the category is, and then go back and find other content that they find useful as well. So it's another way to keep them engaged and keep them browsing on the site. But definitely enable breadcrumbs. <clears throat> All right. The separator. Um, that's the separator with inside breadcrumbs. Um, so this is really up to you. This is your preference. Um, you know, I don't really recommend using pipes in this situation because you're really not trying to separate anything. I tend to use the carrots. You know, I, it's widely known. People recognize it this day and age. You know, as a breadcrumb feature, and it kind of just insinuates, hey, I was here, I navigated here, then I went here. You know, so I would recommend using carrots. Just most people know what its intention is. Anchor text for the home page within your uh, breadcrumb, you can alter that. So if you wanted to give your, your home page a custom name within, within the uh, breadcrumb, you can alter that there. Again, it's your, your preference. Typically, I leave it at home because everybody, again, resonates with that and know, knows exactly what it is. You can also append a, or, uh, add a prefix to the breadcrumb path. Um, so again, you can add something like, you are here, just to make it that clear that that's what this is for. All right, so you can set the prefixes for archives, uh, search pages, and the 404 page. Um, it's really your preference. Um, you know, I tend to make, you know, just go as far as you can. You make it uh, as custom as possible. If you're on the 404 page, you know, say, oops, this, this page is broken. Here are some related links. You can do anything of that nature. So just make it custom. It's up to you. Just again, it's back to the user experience. You can choose to remove the blog page from the breadcrumbs. Um, again, this really just comes down to your preference um, and how much content you have. If you have multiple layers of categories, um, you may want to remove it. But then again, you may want to be able to give them the option to come back to your most recent post. So six and one, half, and do half dozen in the other. So the difference, as you can see, home, web design, best font 2015. The difference, if you that would be if you uh, checked it. If you didn't check it, you would have home, blog, web design, best fonts of 2015. <coughs> All right, then you can also have the option to bold the last page. I typically always check this just because it, it, uh, it tells you, hey, this is where you are. So it, again, people resonate with it, understand it. I would go ahead and check that box. All right, you can also uh, select which taxonomy you want to show within the breadcrumbs. Uh, most oftentimes, nothing is selected. However, um, you may want to include the categories. I, I can't really think of why you would want to include tags. You, you might have multiple tags on a, on a post. Um, category really just makes the most sense if you are going to use this option. Um, however, I don't really recommend it. I, I don't. Um, user, using breadcrumbs does require advanced implementation. So you'll have to take this code here and place it on any template file that you want the breadcrumbs to show up on. So you'll have your post template and your page template, typically. Um, sometimes people don't like to put the breadcrumbs on the, the pages. However, I do. I just think it, uh, it, adds, just, it adds to the user experience. So um, if you need your developer or somebody you know, to dive into that template and add it, you know, get them to do it. If you're savvy enough to do it, definitely make sure to get it done. RSS. So RSS feed, um, it, this is a great feature um, to make sure to, you can prevent scrapers from doing too much damage. Um, scrapers are people who just scrape the internet for content and reuse it, basically steal your content to put on their own blog and try to capture con uh, traffic. This feature, what it does is it ensures that you're including a link back to your post and the blog so Google knows where the original content came from. So this is definitely a great level of, um, of security to make sure that you're not uh, getting flagged for duplicate content because of somebody else's efforts. <coughs> All right, so as you can see, 
We can add content to put after each of the post feeds. Really, you only need to do one or the other. You are allowed to input HTML if you would like. So if you wanted to put a manual link, you can. But they also have these short codes that you can use um, to you know, use the, a link to the archive. You can link to the actual post, a link to your site, or a link to uh, your site with the site and the description being the entire link. Typically, this is how it comes right here. Um, standard right here. I would just leave it default. It does a great job on its own. All right. Import and export. This plugin um, allows you to import settings from other SEO plugins. So how many people here do have an SEO plugin, but it isn't this one? Okay, so you'll have the option to import those settings from there if you feel that they're accurate and you like how it's working. So certain uh, other plugins that you can use in other frameworks is Head, Headspace 2, the all-in-one SEO plugin. Is that the ones that y'all are currently using? Yeah, I used to use it as well. Um, so it does offer for the new and the old one. And also it uh, pulls the settings from WooThemes SEO framework. Right. Um, also, if there's some other outlier plugins. Um, if you've used any of those, you can try using the SEO Data Transporter plugin. Um, it does a pretty good job of understanding different plugins. But um, again, if you've been using another plugin like that and you're not too sure about SEO, again, I would probably just start from scratch. All right. <clears throat> um, so you can choose to uh, import settings from other plugins within by, that were done by Yoast. So if you're using just the import from uh, or the Robots Meta plugin, the RSS footer plugin, or the Yoast Breadcrumbs plugin, um, you can also just pull the data from that and incorporate it in here. <coughs> to export your current WordPress SEO settings, so if you wanted to, you know, say you were moving your blog onto a staging server to do some development, you could export your settings and move it onto the staging server. Um, by simply just clicking export settings. I would just go ahead and include taxonomy data. Um, the more the merrier. You might as well pull all the data that you have. Um, so that's gonna pull your categories, your tags, and all that good stuff. All right, so um, to import the settings, like I said, um, you just, you'll come in here, you'll, first you'll go into the other plugin, and you're gonna need to dive into the server files and find within that plugin's files the settings.zip file. Once you download that, all you're going to need to do is upload it into here and import settings, and WordPress SEO will take care of the rest for you. I should plug my computer in first. Any questions while I'm doing this? Yes, all the slides will be, you'll be able to download later on uh, the WordCamp site. What kind of uh, like ongoing maintenance do you think that like Yoast needs once you've gone ahead and done the initial setup? <coughs> Say that one more time, I'm sorry. Like, is there an overall maintenance that's like stuff that you can go back to do like month to month after you've done all the initial setup that helps you? Absolutely. Is SEO is a session on or something? Yeah. That, yeah. That's a year long session. Um, it, is there any direct link to reading or something you'd like to say yes? Um, well, one of the things that um, there's, there's so much out there, you just got to make sure that you're finding people who have been in the, the industry and are well respected. So, you know, use your due diligence, do your research on the, the person that you're reading articles about, um, and, you know, see what their results are. Um, there's a lot of there a lot of resources after, but come get with me after, and I'll, I'll give you some uh, cool. some resources. I think this. Uh, I am, but uh, let me get through the rest of this. I'm almost done. Okay. Next great feature is the bulk editor. So if you've got hundreds of pages, hundreds of posts, okay, going through each individual page, you know, having to click on that link, going in, filling in the information, clicking out of it, going back to another one, going to that page, filling in the information, it, it can get pretty tiresome. Um, so the bulk editor, what it allows you to do is it'll pull all your pages in one, in one big screen, 
and you'll have the option to see your existing Yoast SEO title and you have the option to put in your new SEO title. Um, if you don't have an SEO title implemented already, this will just be blank. Okay, so it'll be pulling this. This is what will show up in the search results. One drawback to this feature is it doesn't um, allow you to see how many characters or if, um, if it's going to fit within Google's fixed width of allowed uh, title tag length. Um, <clears throat> so what I would do is test all your titles within the on-page analysis uh, feature and just make sure and then build a spreadsheet and then come in and then enter them all at the same time because you want to make sure that you're not getting those ellipses at the end. All right, the same thing. Um, <clears throat> So the same thing works for the descriptions as well, the exact same thing. As you can see, like I said earlier, there's uh, no description here, um, which means it hadn't been implemented, but you can go ahead. Again, it's not going to tell you here that whether or not your description is under 156 characters. So the meta description, you have to make sure it is. Um, so again, just make sure you test it um, before implementing. Robots.txt file. Um, Robots.txt file is simply a file used um, as an exclusion standard for the search engines um, to, commu or to communicate with their web crawlers. Uh, to put it plainly, it just tells them whether or not to, uh, to crawl your site or not. Um, Google actually doesn't recommend having one. There's really no reason for you to mess with it, so just leave it alone. An HT access file, um, this is a file that's uh, This is a file that lets you, sorry, this slide's kind of messed up. Um, it allows you to do certain things like implement 301 redirects, uh, some more advanced development features. Um, typically leave this to your developer to, to mess with um, because you can actually implement 301 re redirects on the actual on-page editor. Um, but it, you can also do certain things like uh, prevent hot linking, which will, like certain people will uh, link to an image on somebody else's server and use it on their site. And so when that image get lo gets loaded, that person's server isn't being affected. It's somebody else's server. And so we're taking their bandwidth, their resources, to load an image that's not even ours. So hot linking. But again, this is a kind of an advanced feature. I would leave it alone and uh, uh, up to your developer. All right, so the on-page editor. This is probably the most beneficial feature of uh, WordPress SEO. Um, so this is the, the first screen you'll see. Typically, this will be on every single page or post um, that when you go to the actual individual page or post. And it's at the bottom, underneath all the contents sections. The first tab that we have here is the general tab. And we have a snippet preview of what our search result is going to look like in the search engines. Okay, so if you haven't filled out anything, you know, it's going to pull what you have in the content. It's going to take the title that you have at the top of the page. It's going to pull the first few sentences as your meta description. Um, so we want to make sure we fill this out. Um, another great thing is it provides um, a focus keyword option. So if you are getting really good at SEO and you've decided to, you know, create a page targeting a specific keyword or phrase or different variations of it, um, you would want to enter that keyword. And what it does is it provides recommendations for article heading to make sure that you had that keyword included there. It also provides uh, recommendations for um, the page title that it's in there, the page URL, the content, and the meta description. Okay, those are five aspects right there that uh, better increase your SEO. And uh, you want to try to get greens at all, all times. One, one comment I want to make is when it comes to the part where content, don't keyword stuff. Okay, it used to be the case where you could just take the keyword web design and put it 30 times into your page and you would start ranking. Okay, that, that's just bad practice. I want you to solely focus on quality content. Okay, and if you've created quality content and you love it and it answers every single question that that end user could ask, but then this is telling you that you don't have enough keywords in there, I don't care what it says. As long as that content is just fantastic, leave it alone. Okay? Don't, if you find yourself saying, oh, I have to go back into this, this post and add more keywords, then you're keyword stuffing. Okay? You're, if you developed a page that is quality, that keyword that you're focusing on should naturally, naturally appear. So don't find yourself keyword stuffing. If you take anything from this, that is the one thing I would like you to take. <coughs> All right. 
So again, um, what this does, um, the SEO title here, again, Google has a fixed width. They used to have a number of characters you could use in your title tag, but they've changed it a little bit to a fixed width. So what you can do is you can just kind of test here, start adding uh, certain things, and um, you know, it, Google will tell you um, your title tag is too long, and you'll see the ellipses pop up. Okay, if you get the ellipses, there may be some information, because we're not serving the entire title tag, there may be some information at the end of it that is pertinent to the end user, however, they're not going to be able to read it. So you want to try to con consolidate that title tag into something that's going to be fully readable. So typically, a good title tag, um, a good template to work off of is this right here. First, you'll have the title of the article or the page. Okay? Then we use our separator. You can use whatever you want, a, a hyphen or a pipe. Again, like I said, I prefer the pipe. If you are a local company, or you're specializing in a certain area, the next thing you're going to want to try to include is a location identifier. Okay, then the third thing is you want to include your brand name. Brand awareness is imperative. You don't want to lose that. Okay, every time they keep seeing your name pop up in the search results for certain queries, they're going to start to consider you an expert within the industry, and they're going to be more inclined to click on your results in the future. All right, so as you can see here for Southern Web, our company, we have our web design page. We're based in Atlanta, Georgia, so we have our location identifier there and our brand name. Short, sweet, to the point. All right, the next tab is the page analysis tab. Um, so we've got, what it'll do is it'll tell you everything that's, um, that's wrong with your page as far, from an SEO standpoint. So what you want to do is try to go through this and treat it as a checklist. You know, just try to, to take their suggestions. So the first one we have here is we have no images on the page. So Google's, you know, they're recommending that we should add images. Okay. So make sure to just go through it. Um, keyword density, um, copy scores. This is probably one of the best things I like about it is the reading test. Okay. How how easy is it it, it to read? Okay. So that's again, SEO is all about user experience these days. All right. The uh, last tab is the advanced tab. Um, be careful in here. The, the best things that you can do is you can no index a page or index a page. So what that means is telling Google, hey, come crawl this page, include it in the search results, or don't include it in the search results. Typically, the only time you would not want to do that is say if you're running like a Google AdWords campaign, you have a landing page that's solely meant for AdWords traffic. You don't want that to show in the search results, so that's a page you would no index. Um, <clears throat> then you have the follow, no follow, meta robots, um, then all these different things, um, including sitemap, auto detect. Pretty much you want to leave all this stuff alone. This is the option, the canonical URL that I was talking about earlier. If you have a page, a parent page that you're using um, to, um, that you borrowed some com content from, go ahead and place that parent page's URL here so Google knows that you borrowed the content from there. All right, and then 301 redirects. So if you've had this page for a long time, however, it's just not really useful, it's kind of outdated, and you have new content that you, a new page that you want to send people to that's just more relevant, go ahead and pass that page rank from this page onto that new page, okay? That, so anytime somebody, if that link to this page exists somewhere else on the internet and they click on it, it'll take them, it'll redirect them to that new page. All right, uh, on-page editor for social, um, definitely always fill this stuff in. This is to make sure that all of your posts are completely optimized uh, for social media. So you want to include a title, Facebook uh, description for both uh, Facebook, Twitter, um, and make sure that the images are the right sizes. Poof, you're an expert. <laughs> Questions? I, uh, we got, don't have very much time, but uh, what do we got? You don't fill out the, the last um, slide of the social. Uh, will it accept or use the default that you did have? On yes, the description? it will. Okay. It will. So, um, you know, from the, when we were on that general section, you know, that's pretty much site wide. You know, so that's going to be your catch all. So, if there is a page that you didn't come in and personally optimize yourself, you'll, it'll use that catch all. That's why I recommend baseball, Facebook debugger tool as well. Yep, absolutely. It's a great tool. No, just uh, just throw the plug in and just follow what we've done here. It, it's it's pretty much uh, consistent. So. Yes, a lot of the stuff here 
is default, okay? But I wanted you to understand what they actually mean because there are instances, you know, where it does apply to you. Absolutely. So one of the sections is you can include taxonomies and in, uh, uh, in different post types in your sitemap. So make sure you, that you have that custom post type included in your sitemap. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes? Uh, what are separated the types? Mm -hmm. like, is that the more SEO friendly? To me, it, yeah. The answer to the question is yes, because it comes down to user experience. In my opinion, I, it's just the best separator, in my opinion, and I feel like it does the best job. So um, it, it segments the different parts of the title, and I think it adds more SEO value. I think in my, the test I ran, the pipe has the highest click-through rate. That's the beauty about permalinks is, you know, once you have a, a, a link established inside WordPress, you know, as long as you've done it the right way, um, it will update any time you make changes to a URL or add a 3.1 or anything, change the, or add a category to the blog post, it will automatically update this. Yes. Is there a paid upgrade for the Yoast and is there a benefit for that? What is the benefit? Yeah, the, the support. There's the premium SEO plugin and you can get their support. So um, I, I can't remember what the pricing is on it. Um, it's fairly inexpensive. It's strictly the support. Yeah, and it's if you get stuck, it, it's a great, great feature to have. Absolutely. Yep. I'm a bulk editor. Is there a way to bring your bring your pages or your links up and down your spreadsheet to update, create all your updated titles and update? I wish. Um, it's a feature that I'm, I'm, I've been asking for. So currently, no. There's because I thought there was also a way to upload um, a spreadsheet into the bulk editor, you know, because that's typically how I like to build my titles and metas. And unfortunately, it's not. But I, I believe they're actively working on it. Yeah, it is. So you could do some stuff to to, to export it yourself. But currently, Yoast does not provide that that feature. Any other questions? So do you have it depends. Um, so say you don't have a location identifier. Okay, that's another opportunity to use a different variation of your keyword, uh, a targeted keyword. Okay, so um, if you got Atlanta web web design, okay, so say we, we decided to go with Atlanta web design as the first title tag or the first part of that. Then we could do website optimization in the second part, then southern web. You know, so if, you, if location identifier doesn't apply to you, use it as an opportunity to target a different keyword. But make sure it makes sense to the end user, okay? And make sure it's related. Okay? And does the keyword have to uh, relate to the text in to the content? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Don't don't throw a keyword in there if it has nothing to do with your content. That's the quickest way to get penalized. Yes. Did I understand you correctly? In bulk editor, when you first start using that, you're not going to have um, the SEO title or the description. You have to manually put that in the first line. Correct. Correct. So um, typically, you know, as you build your page, if you go in and you're building page by page, you'll be able to do that in the on page. But say you take over, you're someone like myself who takes over websites, they may have done some optimization prior and I want to change everything. So that's a quick way to do it all. But as you're building page by page, you should take the time to fill it in the on page analysis. Okay? Guys, thank you so much for coming. Enjoy the rest of the day.